A propeller rotating through the air creates an area of low pressure in front of the blade. This low pressure area, combined with an area of high pressure behind the blade, enables a propeller to produce thrust. The amount of thrust produced depends on several factors, including the propeller blade's angle of attack, speed, and airfoil shape. The angle of attack of a propeller blade is the angle formed by the cord line of the blade and the relative wind. The direction of the relative wind is determined by the speed that aircraft moves through the air and the rotational motion of the propeller. For example, when a propeller rotates on a stationary aircraft, the direction of the relative wind is exactly opposite to the rotational movement of the propeller. In this case, the angle of attack is the same as the propeller blade angle. When the aircraft begins moving forward, the relative wind direction shifts because, in addition to rotating, the propeller now has forward motion. The result is that the relative wind is much closer to the angle of attack. In this case, the angle of attack will always be less than the blade angle. Based on the effect that forward motion has on the relative wind of a propeller blade, the faster an aircraft moves through the air, the smaller the angle of attack on the propeller blade. However, if propeller speed increases, the trailing edge of the propeller blade travels a greater distance for the same amount of forward movement. As propeller speed increases, the relative wind strikes the propeller blade at a greater angle and the angle of attack increases. The most effective angle of attack for a propeller blade is between 2 and 4 degrees. Any angle of attack exceeding 15 degrees is ineffective because a propeller blade might stall. Typically, propellers with a fixed blade angle are designed to produce an angle of attack between 2 and 4 degrees at either a climb or cruise airspeed with a specific speed setting. Unlike a wing, which moves through the air at a uniform rate, the propeller sections near the tip rotate at a greater velocity than those near the hub. The difference in rotational velocity along a propeller blade segment can be found by first calculating the circumference of the arc traveled by a point on that segment. The circumference of a circle is calculated with the formula. The circumference is then multiplied by engine speed in RPM to find rotational velocity. For example, to determine blade velocity at a point 18 inches from the hub that is rotating at 1,800 RPM. At a point 18 inches from the hub the blade travels approximately 203,575 inches per minute. To convert this to miles per hour, divide 203,575 by 63,360 and multiply the product by 60, the number of minutes in one hour. The speed of the propeller at station 18 is 192, 7 miles per hour. You can now compare this to the speed of the propeller at station 48. By using the same formulas, you can determine that, at station 48, the propeller is moving at 514 miles per hour. To compensate for the difference in velocity along a propeller blade, the blade angle changes along its length. The gradual decrease in blade angle from the hub to the tip is called pitch distribution, or twist. Blade twist enables a propeller to provide a fairly constant angle of attack along most of the length of the blade. In addition to blade twist, most propellers have a thicker, low-speed airfoil near the blade hub and a thinner, high-speed airfoil near the tip. This, along with blade twist, enables the propeller to produce a relatively constant amount of thrust along the entire length of a propeller blade. A rotating propeller is acted upon by centrifugal twisting, aerodynamic twisting, torque bending, and thrust bending forces. Centrifugal force is a physical force that tends to throw the rotating propeller blades away from the hub. This is the most dominant force on the propeller. Torque bending force, in the form of air resistance, tends to bend the propeller blades in the direction opposite that of rotation. Thrust bending force is the thrust load that tends to bend propeller blades forward as the aircraft is pulled through the air. Aerodynamic twisting force tends to turn the blades to a high blade angle. Centrifugal twisting force, being greater than the aerodynamic twisting force, tends to force the blades toward a low blade angle. At least two of these forces acting on the propeller's blades are used to move the blades on a controllable pitch propeller. Centrifugal twisting force is sometimes used to move the blades to the low pitch position, while aerodynamic twisting force is used to move the blades into high pitch. These forces can be the primary or secondary forces that move the blades to the new pitch position. Pitch is not the same as blade angle, but because pitch is largely determined by blade angle, 
the two terms are often used interchangeably. An increase or decrease in one is usually associated with an increase or decrease in the other. Propeller slip is the difference between the geometric pitch of the propeller and its effective pitch. Geometric pitch is the distance a propeller should advance in one revolution with no slippage. Effective pitch is the distance it actually advances. Thus, geometric or theoretical pitch is based on no slippage. Actual or effective pitch recognizes propeller slippage in the air. Geometric pitch is usually expressed in pitch inches and calculated by using the formula. Although blade angle and propeller pitch are closely related, blade angle is the angle between the face or cord of a blade section and the plane in which the propeller rotates. Thanks for watching.